Hi everyone. So um, it has come to my attention that a lot of fake pages have been created for me on different social media platforms. Um, asking people to give money, requesting um, some kind of support to some orphanage somewhere and they ask you to call. Um, I just wanted to do this disclaimer because I don't want you to be scammed by these people. Um, I do not ask for money in your DM or send you a message asking for money or asking you to give any kind of money to any orphanage or anything. I would not do that. Secondly, I have only one page on every social media platform. So on Instagram, I have one page at Pastor Mildred. On YouTube, um, it's Mildred Kingsley Konko and on Facebook is Mildred Kingsley Konko. Um, I do not have any other backup page or fan page or any of that sort of page. Um, so please be careful when you're dealing with people on social media. Be very careful. Um, my other handles do not have pastor, do not have, my surname is King Sokongwa, not Okonkwa. So just be careful out there. Um, I also wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you for being a part of my tribe and the community on every platform. Because of you, I get to do what I do every day and I love doing it. Thank you everyone for being such a huge support um, to everything that I do. God bless you. Hi everyone. So I'm back with mentoring sessions with Pastor M. Um, so I get this question all the time. I'm going to keep it really short. I get this question all the time. How do you balance your life? Um, your life seems to be so busy. How do you manage marriage, the kids, ministry, books, everything that you do? And the truth is that I know that I do quite a lot. Um, my life is really busy. And when people ask me that question, I kind of share a lot of things. But today I just want to share seven things that I do to balance my life. Um, now, these principles are not necessarily cast in iron, but I think that they can help anyone. Um, first thing I need to say is that I do not really believe that you can, okay, let me not say balance, but I don't know if you can really say balance your life. I think that we just all find a way to manage things. So um, the important thing is to make sure that you don't drop too many balls or at least just try to, you know, stabilize some things um, so these are just seven things that I I do all the time to make it easy for me so the first thing of course is that I pray number one I can't take that away and I know some people are going to roll their eyes at me mm. what would she say before but the truth is that I think that prayer helps I think that prayer helps you to balance out the things that you can't do so prayer would put things in perspective for you. Prayer will strengthen you. Prayer will give you grace. Prayer will bring the right people to you. Prayer will just balance everything out. So prayer is basically me submitting my life, my day, my time to God and saying, God, you know what? Help me put it all together because it really doesn't make sense to me how I can do all of these things. So prayer helps me with that. Prayer also helps me to remain centered because if you're not healthy as a person, then your life can be chaotic. So one of the things that I try to do is bring peace into my life and prayer does that for me so me talking to God and God talking right back to me telling me do this on this day go here don't do that stop there have been times that God has just right in the middle of something just said this isn't what you should be doing now okay and so that has helped me a lot um, prayer also helps my character helps me to be strong when I think I can't do it anymore when I get to the literally to the end of myself um, I ask for strength so prayer is something that I think will help anyone who thinks that their life is really busy. And the truth is, if you're too busy to pray, then trust me, you're too busy. So I hear a lot of people say that, oh, I don't have the time. If you don't have the time to pray, then you don't, your time, you need to, in fact, totally rearrange your life. So prayer is the first thing that I do. Um, second thing that I do is that I plan. I'm such a planner. And planning helps my life. Um, planning means that I get to project. So I look into the future. These are the days I'm traveling. These are the days that I'm going to be around. 
Um, so these are the holidays my kids have. I literally plan out my months, my years, my days. Um, if I need to be at a certain appointment, if I do not have a plan, my life will be chaotic because I have so many, I will have so many loose ends. So one of the things that I do is I literally plan out my day. I plan out my day. I plan out my meals. I plan out my kids' meals. I plan out my week. I plan out my month. Um, my year is kind of planned out. But of course, you know, having a plan doesn't mean that um, you don't make room for emergencies. What it does is that it makes sure that the emergencies are not too many. Okay, that's what having a plan does for me. And then it helps me process things so I can plan to, oh, this is the budget I will have for this. Oh, I'm not going to be around for three weeks. Okay, so who can stay with my kids? Um, do I have to ship someone in? Or can I leave them with their nanny? Um, do, do I, do I what, what would they eat in this time? Would there be enough food? Would there be enough? So I, I literally plan everything out. Um, I plan my holidays and rest around my children's holidays so i have their school calendar i have their school meal plan so i make sure they don't eat the same thing when they get home so literally having a plan just puts everything in perspective for you and it makes your life easier because everything is already scheduled and it's detailed so you know what you're going to do from this time to this time so it makes everything a bit more sane than me just running around like i'm trying to put out fires okay now the third thing i do to balance my life is that I prepare. So I don't just jump into my day. I literally take a few minutes and just plan, prepare for the day. So if I'm going to travel, I would have prepared. So it's not the last minute that I'm just saying, oh, what clothes am I going to wear? I'd have prepared for it, made the things I need to make. If I need to talk to a designer, get my clothes cleaned. Um, if, if I need to make meals for my kids, I would have cooked and stored everything in the freezer. Um, I prepare my messages ahead of time when I'm going to preach somewhere. Um, I read ahead, I plan. So having, you know, a prepared lifestyle. So don't just, don't just wait till things happen. I don't wait till things happen. I prepare and anticipate the things that can actually come up. And so I prepare for them, okay? So that's the third thing that I do. Number four is that I employ people. So what I mean by that is I believe that when God wants to bless you, he sends people into your life. When Satan wants to harm you as well, he kind of sends people into your life. So people are important. I don't think that I can do all the things I do without people. So people in the sense that um, I allow people to do the things that I cannot do, okay, or things that people can do for me and do only the things that I can do. So I'll give you an example. So for instance, my kids, um, someone can do homework with my kids not all the time of course i do homework with my kids but if i need to travel someone can do homework with my kids but checking up on their well-being i don't think it's something someone can do for me and when i mean well-being i mean their emotional well-being i mean their spiritual well-being so when even when i'm not available uh maybe i have to go on a trip i call my kids every day i call them in the morning to know how they're doing i talk to every one of them because i know how each one of them is so i know what signs to look out for. I talk to them, I pray with them. When I'm at home, I make sure I read the Bible with them, I pray with them and anoint them. Um, I spend time investing in them. So anytime I'm not around, I take my time to spend quality, you know, when I'm back, I now spend quality time with them. So um, there are things that people can do for you, okay? So people can cook for, for my husband, for instance. So if I'm not available to do that, I can either get someone to make meals and pay or whatever, you know, I can delegate, okay? I can basically just delegate to someone. But there are certain things, like talking to my husband about our plans and our visions, talking to my husband about our future, sleeping with my husband, nobody had better be doing that for me. So, you know, there are basically things that only you can do, but take advantage of people in your life. Um, people help me organize. So I have um, people who help me plan out my days. I have people who help me, um, you know, I have people who basically who help with everything, you know, social media, um, resources, everything really. I take advantage of the fact that God has placed people in my life. So I look at their, their strengths and I apply that to where my weaknesses are. So take advantage of people in your life. Look around, you'll be shocked that everyone you need is somehow around you. I, th I think it's Mike Mudok that says that you are four people away from anyone you want to meet in the world. So God always sends you people. So it's important that you take advantage of those people. 
um, their strengths and also be a blessing to them. So don't just use people, be a blessing to them as well. But people will help you balance out your life. Okay, number five, I believe. Yeah, number five. So number five, one of the ways I balance my life is I prioritize, okay? So what are the things that are important and urgent? You know, there are ways to, to balance these things out. Um, some things may be important, but they're not urgent. Some things may even be urgent and they're not important. I, I, I try to prioritize what's important and I do them first. So that's where planning and preparing comes into the picture. So I just try to prioritize and see these are the things that I can do now that, that need my urgent attention, I, attention and I get to it. Um, then there are also some other things that I think, okay, nobody's going to die if I don't do them quickly, but I get to them eventually. So prioritize. Ask yourself what's really important. If I don't do this now, will somebody die? If they won't die, then I'll get to it. Um, now, please be careful not to procrastinate. Okay, that's another mistake that you will make. It's a pitfall. Um, when I say prioritize, I don't mean don't get to the other things, but I'm saying there's some things that are more important and more urgent than others. Okay, so get to those first and then um, follow, quickly on, follow up quickly on the other ones. Um, number six, number six, I pay people to do things. I pay for things. Um, sometimes the energy you're putting into some things, you can just pay for it. So I, I, feel, I feel sometimes like, especially women, we put ourselves under so much pressure to do some things that we can pay for. So you feel like you're more of a woman if you clean your house yourself. Uh -huh, well, not exactly. If you can afford to, why not pay somebody to clean? Um, some women feel like, if I don't wash my husband's clothes, oh, you guys are you're doing well. If you can pay for it, pay for it. Pay for it and save that time and use it to do other more important things, okay? Um, now, I'm not saying that, this is not to say that it's not important for you to be able to clean your house by yourself if you can, if you have the time. But for me, I'm really busy. So it's not something that, that time spent cleaning my house I could use it to be doing very important, timely things. So I can pay someone, okay? If you can afford it, pay. Pay for certain services. Um, if you can have someone do your kid's hair, pay for it. Um, if you can have someone, if you, if you are not even someone like, if you're, if you're someone who doesn't even have the time to cook all the time, you can pay for some of these things. If your husband doesn't mind, my husband likes to eat my own meals. So maybe I may not be, you know, I love to do that all the time. But if you're somebody whose husband doesn't mind, then go ahead you know, and make sure that you, it saves you time, basically. So I'm weighing money in terms of time. So is it valuable exchange? So if I pay someone to do this thing, does it save me time? If I pay someone to do this, does it save me energy that I can use to do other bigger and greater things? Okay, so pay. The final thing, how to balance your life, play. I play. I rest. I'm not reading the Bible all the time. I'm not preaching all the time. I'm not jumping everywhere all the time. I'm, sometimes I'm just Netflixing and chilling. Even though these days Netflix is where it does. Or I'm reading a novel, or I'm playing a game on my phone or my iPad. I'm sometimes just playing. What play does for you is that it helps you to refresh. It helps you to refresh, you recenter, and then you, you start again. Because if you, as a human being, are not balanced, then your life cannot be balanced. That's why the Bible says that you should guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it goes the issues of life. It is your heart that controls your life. If your heart is not balanced, your heart is not at peace, your heart is not centered, your life cannot be balanced. Okay, so I hope these seven things help you. So remember, pray, plan, prepare, um, people, prioritize, pay, and then of course, play. Okay guys, that's it. God bless you. Hi everyone. So um, it has come to my attention that a lot of fake pages have been created for me on different social media platforms, um, asking people to give money, requesting um, some kind of support to some orphanage somewhere and they ask you to call. Um, I just wanted to do this disclaimer because I don't want you to be scammed by these people. Um, I do not ask for money in your DM or send you a message asking for money or asking you to give any kind of money to any orphanage or anything. I would not do that. Secondly, I have only one page on every social media platform. 
So on Instagram, I have one page at Pastor Mildred. On YouTube, um, it's Mildred Kingsley Konko, and on Facebook is Mildred Kingsley Konko. Um, I do not have any other backup page or fan page or any of that sort of page. Um, so please be careful when you're dealing with people on social media. Be very careful. Um, my other handles do not have pastor, do not have, my surname is King Sukongo and not Okonko, so just be careful out there. Um, I also wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you for being a part of my tribe and the community on every platform. Because of you, I get to do what I do every day and I love doing it. Thank you everyone for being such a huge support um, to everything that I do. God bless you.